Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Pony 411. This is episode 245 for the week of November 25th, 2018. I am Alcatraz, and joining me is Nemesis. Hello! So yes, Thanksgiving just happened. Yep. And it was not as bad as I thought it was going mm-hmm. to be this year. Could have been better always, but not as bad as I was expecting. Yeah. In a couple years where it's not great. Yeah. <laughs> not this one, though. This one was Yeah, this okay. one was okay. Sorry to all of you who had a bad Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, meeting with family can sometimes be great. Other times, not so much. Mm-hmm. Not one that I'm huge on doing. Not a huge fan of my family. <laughs> yep. Got through Black Friday, too. Hopefully hopefully people got what they were, wanted to and didn't die. It's Cyber Monday by the time you hear this, too. That's happening. Mm-hmm. Cyber Monday. Woo. So, yeah. I'll be seeing Wreck-It Ralph 2 pretty shortly. Ralph breaks the internet? Yep, gonna see that pretty shortly. I'm taking my mother for her birthday present because she wants to see it. I've been starting to hear little little things here and there mm-hmm. about it. I haven't seen it yet. I don't have any current plans, but... I don't go to see movies very often. I also bought a couple things. Not a whole bunch, really. I bought myself a new hard drive. Woo! Got an early Black Friday sale on that one, so that's going to be fun getting that switched over. I bought a game and some figures. Oh, I did buy a couple a couple games. Within the last two weeks, I bought a couple games, yeah. <laughs> Which ones? One of them was Spyro. Oh, yeah, I saw I you playing Spyro. that when you tried to invite me, and it's like, I'm not yeah. on the Xbox, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't let me know if you're on Xbox or not. It just says what game you're playing. But yeah, I bought Spyro, and I'm having a lot of fun with that one. That one's a good one for just if you just want to play for a little bit. Yeah. You don't have to sit down and play for long periods of time. And, yeah, I also got Horizon 4. Aha! I'm I surprised it. you haven't noticed that, because I've been playing it. I haven't I've been looking at it. Yeah. yeah I, did, I did pick that one up. I've been playing that a little bit. I got Celeste on the Switch. I haven't actually played it yet, because I only bought it last night. So I haven't actually played it yet. But I also got some figures, which I'm kind of scared that I bought them, because like, <laughs> this means this is a point of no return now. Yep. Yeah. A couple Figmas. <laughs> That's how our weeks went. I hope your weeks went well, too. But we do have pony stuff to talk about. Gasp. So let's actually start doing that. And we will start with the news. If you would like to follow along, and I recommend that you do, you can find all of our show links and show notes at pony411.libsyn.com slash show notes. So go there, click the link for this episode, and let's get into this. In convention news, BabsCon has announced Tabitha St. Germain. The weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <gasps> yep. And she revels in it. Everfree Northwest has opened their vendor applications. And they've also announced Kath- Kathy Westlock. Yeah. Well, I hope those uh, vendor applications go well. Cause... Yes. We'll <laughs> see. We'll see how those go. I, I saw one person already... Making noise, reminding them of things. Don't mess this up, guys. <laughs> yeah. And last of the convention news, BronyCon has released their sponsor tier badges. So if you want to pay more and get extra perks, you can do that. In fandom news, Overmere Studios is not dead. They have popped up with an update, and it's a fairly big update. Talks about what the heck has been happening. Scaling back. Yeah, they're scaling back. They're under new management. They're reevaluating where things are going. Apparently, they're gonna they're pulling back down to like Ponyville and I believe Sweet. just Sweet Apple Lakers. Yes, this is it. Just those two. They're working on getting stuff out, and they are recruiting. So if you want to help, check out check out the link in the show notes that I told you to go to for more information on that. Into merchandise news: Hasbro will be building family entertainment centers around the U.S. and Canada. Mm-hmm. Much like uh, apparently Lego and Disney stuff that's been popping up. Yeah, like the Lego lands and stuff like that. So Hasbro will be doing the same. So you might find ponies in your local stores or whatnot. Kotobukiya announced the, that their next figure will be Rarity. Yeah, the footnote and a and little, little blog footnote post. And a big blog post yeah. about Pinky. Yeah, you just get all these Pinky pictures at the very, very bottom of all this. Oh, and by the way, Rarity. <laughs> it says. Fourth and entry is rarity. Fourth entry is rarity. That's it. That's it. That's the only line. But hey, no pictures or anything about rarities coming up next. Mm-hmm. And that leaves three left. 
if they do it right there, there'll be three. If they only do two more, well, because it's supposed to be seven. Yeah. Entertainment Earth has new listings for a bunch of new items, including a new Play-Doh set and multiple different figures. There's a lot in there, so I'm not going to go through them all. But yeah. <laughs> including the Cluster Girl stuff. Yep. So yeah, a whole bunch of stuff that they, the, they've listed. The weird one is the return of the Cluster Girls dolls with the pony figure included. That was not been around since the first movie. Yeah. It's just Pinky and Twilight right now, but I don't know. Yeah. And the, those fashion things are coming back, it looks like. And also, this this is a weird one. It's a, what was it? 40 outfits a piece. Oh, geez. I don't think it's a mini. What, it says two three-inch mini dolls, and that's smaller than the uh, minis by quite a bit. That's tiny. It's tiny. I wonder if they're like non-posables, but you can accessorize them. That makes sense. Accessorize. Entertainment Earth also has listings for two new figure sets, a Sea Pony brushable set and a classic, like, blind bag set with pearlized blind bag ones and stuff. New Luna and Celestia fashion style brushables are now available on Amazon. Yeah, they got listed and they just were available. Yep. They just <laughs> shut up. I mean, they were listed and then, like, two days later, they're available now. Yep. Okay. Okay. The Toys R Us exclusive Pinkie Pie birthday surprise set has been spotted in Singapore. Yes, Toys R Us. They're mm. still not dead. Nope, only in the U.S. And even then, that might change, sort of, weirdly. Remember they had the Jeffrey's Toy Box. Yeah. The third wave of Cutie Mark Crew figures have appeared in the Philippines. So they've appeared a little bit early out there. Um, it looks like the packaging has changed. A little bit. Yeah, they're coming, what, these little egg things or something? Yeah, little pop-up egg things. It's Yeah, this, this one seems wedding bash. Yes, weddings. I wonder who's wedding. Uh, I'm guessing Shining and Cadence, considering I see them right there. Yeah, that would make sense, because that was you know the big wedding thing. Yeah, yeah, shit. Cadence comes with a big old cake, and Shining comes with a top hat. Should we get Tori Spelling back? Oh, no. Please don't. <laughs> also, Chrysalis is in this wave. Yeah, so that would make sense. Yeah, let's see. It's all, it's all about yeah, that. because it's different kinds. Totally glittery, shimmering colors, metallic shine, sparkly hair, and bright colors. Bright colors. Mm. Oh, there's a vinyl. And another sunset. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> With a camera. Sunset wasn't there. No. Or maybe she was. I think she knew a little too much. She did. Well, she was peering, peering through the mirror or she something. She was sne- snooping around. Sneaking. Snooping as usual. Ah. <laughs> Resurrect that thing. <laughs> yeah, I guess if I'm going to bring up Tori Spelling... <laughs> Anyway, an FYE exclusive vinyl album has shown up, and we have a track listing. It's when it pink. first popped up, yes, it's bright pink. Yeah, you know, when it first popped up, there was just like one image, and it was really blurry. You couldn't really tell what was on the track, mm-hmm. but someone, someone bought it and took better pictures of it. So, side A has Twilight's Failure, Love Is in Bloom, Flim Flam Cider Song, Becoming Popular, May the Best Pet Win, Art of the Dress, and Ballad of the Crystal Ponies. And Side B has Find a Way, Raise This Barn, The Laughter Song, At the Gala, Make a Wish, Apples of the Core, and Bab Seed. I believe this is a weird variant of previous release finals. Because yeah. I'm pretty sure that track listing for me, I have to check mine because I have, th- I think, three of them. But I'm pretty sure that's the same, some of the same songs I've been on other vinyls. Yeah, I'd have to check exact, again mine too. exact same order and everything. So I think it's just a reprinting of those uh, Hot Topic ones. Could be. Could be. I'd have to double check. But yeah, this one is bright pink. And some small collectible charms are showing up at 99 cent stores. It's like dollar stores and the what like. They look like either plastic or rubber keychain things. Can't tell from the picture if they're hard plastic or soft rubber. I would guess rubber from those. Yeah, could be either one. They're kind of cute. Yeah. Less likely to chip either way than the metal ones that I've had. Into comic news, Seven Seas Entertainment is releasing an MLP, and I'm going to, is it manga or manga? Manga. Manga, I had it right the first time. And papercraft book. Yes, an official MLP manga. Uh... Not just an ad uh, re-release over in Japan from the our stuff. Yeah, it's it's an official. It was the original. second time we we're getting there. We we're doing a manga. Yeah, we have a synopsis for this one, and it is as follows: 
When Pinkie Pie lends a hoof to help Twilight, Sparkle, and Spike clean up the library, she discovers a mysterious mirror with the power to gaze into alternate realities. Upon entering the interdimensional portal, Pinkie sets off a chain of events that threatens to cause a giant mess in Equestria. Bit interesting. There's an Amazon listing for it now as well that has a slightly different synopsis. They say the Golden Oak Library. And instead of saying interdimensional portal, they say when entering the mirror and traveling to alternate realities and Pinky doesn't cr- threaten to create cause a giant mess. It says chain of events that will bring doom to Equestria. Oh no. Which is a bit more serious. I don't know what the different, why we had different, slightly different synopses there. Cause apparently this is a, uh, it's an original English language manga as is revealed by the Amazon listing. Speaking of synopses, though, we have a synopsis for Friendship is Magic comic issue number 75. When a chance purchase leads to a legendary quest for a missing constellation, the ponies reach for the stars and find themselves in the path of their most galactic villain yet, the chaotic cosmos. The one they uh, already teased a bit. Yep. Uh, a little bit of a for what convention it was, but yeah, they teased it yeah. a little bit. So there it is, 75. We see covers and stuff. Cosmos. <laughs> Fun. And we also have a synopsis for Nightmare Nights, issue number five, which is the last one, I believe. Princess Luna and the Nightmare Knights face the ultimate test. With the fate of the heist and Luna's power in the hands of Eris, will the bond between sisters be enough to overcome her chaotic plans? The quest for Luna's stolen strength reach- reaches its epic conclusion. Tables turn and truths are brought to light as the Nightmare Knights heist comes to a close. Huh. Yes. And in our last little bit of news, Billboard has included Sia's Rainbow from the MLP movie in its top 18 animated movie songs. So congrats on that. It's a good song. And the My Little Pony movie score album has been released. Gasp. Yes, the full score, not just the original soundtrack. Mm hmm. It's, yep, still composed by Dana Ingram. Even has a bonus track, which was supposed to replace the weird the pop song that was in the beginning of the movie. Yes, which is actually really cool. Mm-hmm. It's at the end, though, so if you want it in the movie order, you're going to have to swap things around. Yeah. Not a huge deal, but just Not something you should deal, know. But... It's 31 tracks. 31 tracks. There's a lot of music in there. It's available on all major music retailers. Mm-hmm. iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, yep. YouTube. <laughs> Go check that out. That brings us to the end of the news. That's all we got. Mm-hmm. So, it was a, a fair amount of news. Not surprising mm-hmm. for two weeks. I guess we're going to move on to our main discussion topic. Yeah, unfortunately, no comic, even though it came out, because I don't even, I didn't even get a shipping notice, because I think they're, they're um, out for Thanksgiving. Yeah, probably. It so, screws up all sorts of shipping which stuff. Which means we won't hear the next, about, I think it's issue two of Nightmare Nights. I won't be, we won't be talking about it until the next episode in December. Anyway, moving on to our actual discussion topic, we're going to go back and talk about another Season 1 episode. (gasps) Yep, we're going to do that some more. And this week, we are going to talk about Feeling Pinky Keen. Alright, so quick synopsis, if you don't remember the episode. Spike and Twilight see Pinky being really weird, more weird than usual, and they go and try and figure it out. And Pinky's like, oh, it's my Pinky sense, it lets me predict the future, sort of. And Twilight goes, that's stupid, you're stupid. Stop being stupid. <laughs> and Pinky's like, no, it's not. It, it's it's a real thing. And Twilight's like, no, that isn't real. That that's that can't be real. It doesn't make any sense. And then Twilight tries to figure it out scientifically, and that doesn't work. And then Pinky's like, oh, there's a big one about to happen. And it's like, oh, it's in the swamp where Fluttershy is. We have to go help her. And then they go there, and she's fine. But, oh, no, there's a Hydra, and they run from the Hydra. And then Twilight's like, you know what? Whatever, I believe you. And he was like, that was a big doozy. You actually believed me. And that was the end of it. That was the episode. <laughs> essentially. What? Yeah, essentially. essentially, yes. So, this episode, if I remember correctly, this was before I really started watching the show. It was. Was the source of one of the first big controversies within the fandom. Oh, yes. It absolutely was. This episode came across, apparently, and watching it i can see why as like an anti-science 
kind of story. They they came out later and said no, that was not our intention. Yeah, actually, not it wasn't really later. It was like within days. Yeah, they they came out pretty quickly and went yeah, no, <laughs> that's not that was not our intention. I can see why they they why it came across that way though. It's not my favorite episode. I will I will say that, but there. Yeah, there's a bunch of funny bits in it, and and of course, any of the old season one are just rife with, I guess, fandom history. You know, yeah, rife with fandom history and you know, funny emotes and clips and phrases, and this had a bunch of them. This was also the episode that introduced Gummy. But yeah, all in all, not my favorite episode. The the writing it does feel a little bit, it feels weak in places and it definitely did come across as that as anti-science they could have done things better in that case and twilight was kind of a jerk (laughs) your thoughts this episode was a structural mess it's one of those it's just you don't realize uh i guess it's kind of the realization of how not it's of um how bad it was doesn't really pop until now i guess for me, um, yeah, especially when you compare it to what we have now. Yeah, it's it's a it's it's a mess. It's uh, the problem is simply it it kind of starts off with a weird premise and tries to force it to work for this more. The moral they're trying to do is this whole thing about believing your friends, and that you can you cannot tell that from watching the episode. No, it it, it was something went wrong when the when they're writing this one. It was Dave Polsky, by the way. Yeah, it, something went wrong at some point because this is the, the the moral intended and the moral that was conveyed was were so dramatically different. It's a uh, yeah, especially with some of the like key phrases that they use. Really, yeah, it's like especially you have to have leap of faith and they put that extra emphasis on faith. Mm-hmm. And you know the whole bit of you can't prove it scientifically, really just like, uh, <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah, between that and just that was that kind of weirdly you got to do the leap of faith, which is so the whole idea. Yeah, it's supposed to tie in the whole tie its whole thing about not believing Pinky's pinky sense, and that really doesn't. Yeah, it work. didn't work because she didn't have a pinky sense about that. It was just you got to just. Sometimes just trust that something will go right or whatever. Yeah, and it's like so it's, that's also really disconnected from the whole thing. You just gotta trust Pinky's right or something. Yeah, just, it's 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 a weird thing because especially since well, since this episode, the only Pinky sense only really pops up once or twice after this. Yeah, in the entire nev- series, it never shows up to this level of intensity and again. Yeah, and it's uh, and of course, it's because of this episode, people love to really amp up Pinky's nonsense in fan fiction and whatnot. Yeah, she was to really, an annoying degree. Yeah, she was very Pinky during this ep- mm-hmm. episode. This is also the thing was this is also kind of like really, really seeing Twilight being st- over snark. Yeah, <laughs> going to over snark mode, over snark, a lot of passive aggression and and stuff going on. It's like, yeah, this, remember this was very early in the series in general. It was, and she did start out really kind of. And also, the thing was, I like would that. be, uh, I'd be a little miffed if you know, for some reason, my friends saw some weird stuff happen. If stuff kept happening to me. Yeah, <laughs> that was a really that was a weird thing. Also, just every single, it's like almost like the universe itself is like, okay, fine, you don't want to believe this, so I'm going to make sure you personally get punished for it. Yeah, just for being you can get personally punished for being skeptical. Yep, which that would that would annoy me too. But yeah. eventually, yeah, you're gonna start becoming pretty passive aggressive and then outright aggressive. <laughs> I don't blame her for that. Yeah, but she also kind of started out passive aggressive, really, because <laughs> really? this is kind of an inherently absurd concept. It is. And she was, and the whole thing was sci- Twilight's supposed to be the the scientific skeptic and. What not? We see we see that she's supposed to be the, the smart one, so she of course is the one who's scientific and skeptical. Yes, but it's one thing to be skeptical and one thing to be kind of a jerk about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't see. And she was see as... starting to veer into that. <laughs> and I don't see it as jerkish as you do. Yeah, well, there, there's a couple. I see it as phrases. fully understandable, just because this is getting annoying. I'm getting sick of being slammed into walls and having stuff dropped on me. But yeah, but I mean, even earlier than that, even just in the trench right after that. She, she made she a couple of phrases where I was like, that's rather passive aggressive. Well, yeah, she just fell in the trench. Yeah, but still, that was before everything was conspiring against her. 
Which, why in so. the heck is there a random ditch in the middle of Ponyville? Yeah, that's a question. Why? When did this get here? How did this get here? I'd be here? annoyed if a random anyone... ditch appeared in my walkway. <laughs> why doesn't anyone notice? <laughs> or care? Yeah, uh, that's that's one thing. Um, Applejack's there. <laughs> Applejack's there. <laughs> Applejack was there to show that everyone else already understands this. Well, not understands. Pinky. They don't understand. Well, they, they don't understand. It. They, they, they know and accept this. It's, it's a known factor that Applejack already knew. That's why she was there. Yeah. But she's just there. <laughs> she was there. She had a purpose. She did have a purpose there. It is, it is still weird going back to some of the season one episodes and seeing how simple things are. Also did like to kind of head off the past, but what about magic? And it's, magic is a known and studied field. Yep. It's also, just, you know, just, that led to I one like, of the great, greatest scenes, the yeah, soapbox. Soap box, literally getting Literal soapbox. Soap but uh, the thing was, yeah, I just, I like this because it kind of establishes this, that in this world, magic is just another field of science. Yep. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, because the whole thing is magic is not, you know, you know, you got a little quote about, you know, <laughs> Magic is just, you know, t- 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 what time technology, uh, technology? Any sufficiently advanced any technology, technology is, is indistinguishable from magic. magic. That's what it was. I got it backwards. Yeah, I believe that was Clark or a- it was either Clark or Asimov. I here, it's no magic. Just another form of science. Yeah, it's study. You can study it, quantify, it, and all that stuff. And I like that about this world. And that's one of the things I liked about that, that this episode. Of course. It's funny because it seems like some later episodes decide to toss that whole thing out the window. Just, yep. Let's just magic does magic whatever. Magic does and, whatever. I ain't got to explain. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, this this episode, this whole thing was, um, yeah, because she said that whole thing was, it's, it's you, it does what you intended to do. And then later episodes, like, have characters doing things. That, oh, whoops, I messed up. In weird, weird ways that don't make sense. Yeah. Although sometimes with technology... It yeah. doesn't do what you intended to do. It does something completely different because you missed something. Yeah. Like programming a computer. <laughs> why do that? Why Why are you doing that? <laughs> it's not what I wanted. Also the Hydra thing. The Hydra thing. Which we haven't really seen in Hydra since. No, I don't think we have. And one of the fa- one of the heads is dumb. <laughs> Man, it's just... It's just uh, yeah, you got that whole thing with the chase, and actually, I remember this—the Hydra actually looking pretty good animation-wise. And still yeah, it there. wasn't actually too bad. Yeah, what was it? Oh, of course. What would Rainbow Dash do? <laughs> something, something dumb. Just charge it head on, which is exactly what she does. Yeah, like earlier when she kicked a dragon in the face. Yep. Which also, I remember the Fluttershy did reference Dragon Shy with the hop, skip, and a jump. Yep. It's just about again. It's just uh, the uh, there's a lot of stuff like the end stuff doesn't really con- connect very well with the rest of the episode. Most of the episodes just Twilight. Uh, I guess the universe decides to punish Twilight for being skeptical. That's pretty much the episode. I guess yeah. Because it's like no, it's like okay, things falling. That's one thing, but things falling specifically on her because I guess funny. Rule of funny. It's uh, yeah, slapstick, including you know the 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 big one with the flower pot, anvil, hay a hay cart, and piano, and piano, yes, all because of one Pegasus. Derpy, Derpy popped up again there. And I think that's if it just gets mostly just a series of slapstick. Yeah, it is. It and is it a lot gets of a little grating after a bit. It can be, yeah. When it's just slapstick for the sake of slapstick, it does. It gets kind of repetitive, especially and boring. with the, with a very flimsy setup. Yeah, if you have a good setup for it, it's better. But yeah, yeah. Again, it's the whole thing because like the whole it's all this the, the lost stuff about belief and whatnot. And again, because of the whole thing they're talking about how they, they're more was supposed to be believing your friends and stuff. It really, um, yeah, it just it, comes across as sometimes you just gotta well have some faith. And yeah, it comes really poorly, and I can see why some people really threw a fit. Although, yeah, yeah the, the fact that they did they did explain it, but and they and I remember I think Lauren Faust and Dave Polsky both regret how this episode is written. Yeah, they just they kind of wish they. It's I think I can't remember whether one of them one or both of them explained that basically just this episode just wasn't working no matter what they did, and they just kind of forced this one to happen. Yeah, force it, get it out of the door, and just move on to something else. <laughs> It was, it was, yeah, if I recall, it was, it was one that just kept rewriting and rewriting and rewriting. This could not make it work. And it's okay. This was the least bad. That's what I recall. It's, yeah. it's, it's been a long, long time. time. 
heard stuff about this, so I'd have to go back and look. And that's from something from like 2012 or something. I yeah. have to go look it up. The ancient archives of Brony history. <laughs> All six years ago. <laughs> A lot of stuff's happened, man. A lot. God, it's. Yeah, tell me about it. Looking back, it's just like. It's only been six, seven. It's like. You think about it seven years, six years, eight years doesn't seem all that long and then sometimes it really really does um, a lot of things have changed in yeah. the last few but years yeah, one of the actually one of the weirdly more frustrating bits is just uh with the nose thing and pinky hides and oh hey hornets or something because and then they just go after five because hornets are jerks <laughs> i guess yeah because they just go after her because i don't know pinky's hiding so oh can't go after her even though she's open in the open still yeah doesn't matter. Gonna go after the one over way over here in the bush. Uh, leave my wife who alone. <laughs> Comes a point where it's just well. Yeah. It, 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 is, it is quite ridiculous that she's the sole target of all of this. But <laughs> can at least hit Pinky once or twice. Jeez. Yeah, but she knows what's gonna happen so she can protect herself. <laughs> the horn thing, come on. Hiding under a little archway is not going to protect you from hornets. <laughs> that doesn't Unfortunately, do no. <laughs> uh, or Applejack or Spike. Let Spike be the monkey. That's his job. But they believe. They had the power of belief to protect them. <laughs> ah, the power God is anywhere in my yes. side! Ah! Uh, <laughs> Yep. And of course, this was the one with the twilight lighting on fire. Yep, this was that one. Part Kieran, believe. Wait. Bel- just believe. <laughs> <laughs> My head can until proven otherwise. Yep, yep. You can't disprove it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to pull out all, all of the classic tropes here. <laughs> and the other thing, which was, oh, Celestia just slamming just- down on the balcony. Yep, just appears. Like, out of the sky. Well, okay. Celestia, what in the world are you doing? What in the wide, wide world of quest are, are you, you doing? doing? Yes. <laughs> Quote the show itself. And of course, that means me blazing saddles, even though that was also in of itself a reference. Yeah. To wide, wide world of sports. But yeah, like I said, it's just, it's kind of a threadbare, very mess, structurally messy episode that really doesn't work. And yeah, especially it comes across really bad. It just, it just, the problem is just, it's this whole thing about just toss out all the scientific stuff because, because even there's even a bit where Twilight Spike, it's like, I'm trying to teach you good scientific when Spike's running away. Yeah, trying to and good scientific it's, method. It's like, that is actually a really important thing. <laughs> yeah. So it's, 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 uh, and they, to a degree, yeah, Twilight was kind of being a bad scientist to a degree towards the end. I mean, the initial hypothesis, Twilight, or Pinky's thing is just coincidence. And then, it comes a point where it's like, okay, now she's just trying to make everything fit, even the, just yeah. denying the facts. Yep. Don't deny the facts. <laughs> even, even if the facts are ridiculous and seem to be out to get you. <laughs> coincidence. I, like God, do not play with dice and do not believe in coincidence. <laughs> Completely different movie, but. Yeah, actually, yeah, just looking back, it's not a particularly good it's, episode. It's, it was not a great episode. <laughs> I can and see it, why it, it shows, was poorly received. It shows received. why they kind of regret make, writing it the way they did. Yep. Yep. And but it's yeah, sometimes the, good to look back. Why the fandom reacted so poorly to it. Yeah. I'm kind of glad I missed that. <laughs> yeah, it was the first big controversy in the fandom. Like, and this is like, and that's that's not that's nothing compared to what we got later. Uh, controversy what, wise, what was the next one? Derpy Gate. The next one was Lauren Faust left the show. Oh right, that one. That was the next one, and, and then, I was then there was, for that. Then there's a kind of tiny one with the Luna appearing because everyone's freaking out about what's Luna going to be like. And oh, then it was yeah, that was just like a little bubble. Was yeah, it was a little yeah, bubble. Like yeah, I said, murmur. That's like that tiny Derby gate. And then Derby thing happened. That was big. That was a big one. That overshadowed everything. That was huge. And then the big next big freak out was season three is only 13 episodes, which added up to 65 total, which everyone panicked. Yep. And then they confirmed season four. And then the Alicorn rumors started popping up. And everyone's that was a, that was a long panic because that was months. a long panic because then, there was stuff it was a long up early panic, and then it exploded at the end when they finally confirmed it. Yep. And then the Quester Girl stuff started being rumored, and that was the next one. 
right after. Oh, I'm trying to remember when Unicorn U- Unicorn was that be there, and then Equestria Girls was being rumored right at the same time. And uh, there was this, uh, yeah, 2013 was a giant mess of uh, panic and uh, anger. And if only those during the feeling pinky keen drama could see what was going to happen in the future. <laughs> you know nothing. You are like little baby. <laughs> Yeah, next one after that was uh, season five finale <laughs> and forward. Yeah, that one's still not dead. <laughs> that one's still not dead because certain people keep pressing it. Yeah, not guilty. <laughs> <laughs> you are kind of guilty. You are kind of guilty. You are not without guilty. I'm either. not without one hundred percent, but I'm not continuing to push it. I've, I don't know. I'm not always the one who brings it up first, just saying. <laughs> Usually, if I bring it up, I'll point it back at you. No, it's not. I have recordings to prove it. <laughs> oh, anyway, no. We are, we are well off, <laughs> off topic here. It's still pony. It's still pony, but we're way it's off fine. of this episode. I guess it's just not well, all new, that much. The current panic right now is, well, show's ending, probably. Yeah, that that's the current panic. That's the current panic. It's all ogre. Oh, don't say that. Did you see what the writer just posted on Twitter of that movie? I didn't. Uh, what was it? Oh, gosh. I just saw it. I want to see the exact phrase he used. I'm afraid now. It's pretty... Oh, anti-vaxxer. Calling someone anti-vaxxer is equivalent to calling someone the oh, hard N-word. That, that was a writer? Of the, Shrek. Of Shrek. The, oh, I, did, I did see that one. I just didn't connect it to... Uh, uh. Yeah, it's... It's yeah, I did say, see that. And once again, though, dictionary.com coming in with the burn. Oh, <laughs> dictionary.com is great. Yeah, anyway, I think there's just not much left to talk about about feeling pinky keen. Like you said, it was fairly threadbare. It was just not so great. It was a mess. It was not the best. So, unless you have more to add, I don't have any more to add. We can move on. All right, so we got some fan content. I've got three songs that I'm going to feature, and we're going to start off with that. So, first song is Ethereum Apex's Princess of the Night, featuring Lockrock. All right, this is a really fun song. I love the the lyrics in it, and it's got really good flow to it. It's just, it's mixed well, it's made well. I really, really enjoy it. Sometimes the vocals are a bit pitchy, and I, it sounds like either a vocal effect or possibly auto-tune. I can't quite tell. It's fairly, it, it it's not bad. It's not a deal breaker for me. But otherwise, it is, it's a really great and really fun, fun song. Uh, there are times in this song it felt very 80s slash Tron ish at times a bit particularly the intro yeah uh, yeah it's very super upbeat and yeah the thing about the vocals it felt to me like they were hitting like the very top of their range and yeah just kind of brushing against the ceiling and not fully in control of their uh pitch yeah at point. like I said, it's a little bit pitchy and there might be a little bit of auto-tune in there i can't quite tell though but i don't think it's like i said yeah. i don't think it's it's i'm not sure because it. sometimes it sounds like it's just a focal effect I'm not, yeah so it could, I'm not sure. it could so easily like, just be a vocal guessing. Guessing. so yeah the same here i was like is it i don't know it could just be a vocal effect because a vocal effect would actually work really well and it does does still work so it might just be a vocal effect either way i love it it's a good song sounds like you like it too yeah it's good the next one i have and i'm gonna butcher this name Evgeny Doctor's Eternal Nightmare. This is a really good, dark, deep 
Psytrance. And I love me some good Psytrance. And that's and that's what this is. <laughs> and it's very creepy. Yep. With the Luna vocals in there and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, some of the sounds. I uh, I recognize some of those sounds and that I've heard them in other things. There's a very much a um, vocal effect that I'm pretty sure is a stock vocal effect or at least somewhere that people use. I've Possibly, heard it for yeah. sure. It's the same one in Halo yeah. 2. Possibly. Uh, yeah. And, but yeah, it's very driving. Very driving. And, and speaking of driving, this is one of the things I say a lot about Psytrance. It's very dangerous to listen to in the car because you'll suddenly find your speedometer a lot higher than it should be. <laughs> so yes, moving on to the third song. I have joined the Herd's remix of The True Gift of Gifting. I just love the stuff that Join the Herd does. It's just so well done. And this yeah, you song... keep featuring him like every week. <laughs> <laughs> well, Join the Herd, was... he disappeared for a bit and didn't put anything out. And then all of a sudden came a whole bunch of remixes, all one after another. And they're all really, really good. So, yeah. I I yeah. love what he does with this. Yeah, it's actually the third time in a row you featured him. I know. Because you keep coming up with really good <laughs> songs. I can't help it. It's and and this is just another really good song. I just love what what Join the Herd does with with all the instruments and what it does with the vocals, the vocal chopping, the vocal effects, the layered vocals that that, that he does are just really really good. And it, it it just builds upon the emotion and in, in the in the song, the added bounce and the just environment, I guess, atmosphere. That's what I was looking. It's just the atmosphere it expands the atmosphere. It's just so good. So good. Yeah, it does have very interesting vocal effects throughout it. And um, it's kind of a big song. And since, like, you got the audience whatnot yeah. effects in throughout. And so, yeah, it's got a very big sound to it. Big and joyous and happy and fun. And it's good. I had fun once. It was awful. <laughs> That's all I've got for music this week. So... How about fanfics? Fanfic. I do have a fanfic. It's, uh, um, finally I found something. I was yeah. kind of worried. It came <laughs> down to 11th hour. did find something. All right. All right. <laughs> this is called Twilight Sparkles in Outer Space by Palm Palette. Palette. And, uh, well, Twilight unexpectedly finds herself in space. This is not ideal, as you might guess. Um, you know, no, nothing really to get out of space. And, uh, well, her friends, particularly Pinky and Dash and Rarity, try to, well, help her get out of space once they, f- well, figure out, so to speak, that she's in Why space. Oh, yes. And, yeah, it's a 4,800 word fic, and it's pretty funny. I All I know, I'll say this, I can't say too much, because I, I do not want to spoil the best parts for you, but I will say that when I shared this with Alcatraz, I knew I was did something right when I saw his reaction to it. Oh, God. There were, there was all caps yeah. in response. So I will just say uh definitely read it all the way through and pay attention. Yeah. It, it I do recommend reading it, especially once you get to the end. Throughout I mean we, throughout reading it, it felt a little bit a little bit disconnected at times kind of jumping around but it still worked and, and it was all worth it for the, the the resolution i think the jumping around worked really well yeah that's why i say it works it works especially once you take everything into account it, oh. it at, at first when i was reading it it felt a little a little disconnected but not not enough to be a problem i never felt the disconnected as i was like that's a stylistic choice yeah it, like Just I said, jump it's not, between it's not two uh scenes yeah Space sucks. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, that's a feature. Uh, no updates. Nothing updated as far as I know. Because yeah, no, I just looked at the list and no, mm-mm. Uh, not a single update. Yeah, I got nothing new listed here. Yeah, no, no notifications. 
So I guess that brings us to the end. More mm-hmm. fanfic. So that's it. End of the, the podcast. Hope you liked what you heard. If you did, you can listen to all our episodes, past, future, and present, at 2401.libsyn.com. So yes, go there. There's RSS feed and stuff like that. You can find all of them. You can also find us on iTunes. I just search for 2401. Go subscribe to us there and give us five stars. You can also find us on Stitcher, Stitcher.com, or use the mobile apps. Just search for us. You know our name. You can also find us on Google Play, play.google.com slash music, then search for Pony 4 on one You'll find us there. We are also on YouTube, youtube.com slash Pony 4 on one So listen to us there, comment. We will do read those comments as they come in. Like our pages, subscribe to us, click the notification bell. You know what to do. It's YouTube. We have to say that because it's YouTube. <laughs> We are also on Ponyville Live with all the other shows that are on that. So if you use that, you can find us there. We are also airing on Ponyville FM every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. So tune in and listen to us then. Or you tune in any other time because it's a great place to find music and live DJs. If you would like to get a hold of us, you can email us. We are pony411podcast at gmail.com. So as long as comments, criticisms, suggestions, tell us. What you thought about p- feeling pinky keen? Were we completely off base? Were we on base? Or just your thoughts in general? Or if you have something else you want us to talk about, send it to us there and we'll take a look. You can also find us on facebook.com slash pony411. Just like our page there. We post updates when they happen. You can also get a hold of us via Twitter. We are at pony411. Follow us, tweet us. Best way for just saying hi or quick little communications. Or or seeing uh, water creepy water bottles. <laughs> I haven't even seen this creepy. What did, what did you just tweet? I didn't tweet it just now. The creepy dash and Twilight oh, water bottles. Oh, those things. You forgot. Oh, I, I, <laughs> tried <You actually> purging. <laughs> I tried purging those from my memory. Thank you for bringing that back that is horrifying <laughs> those are just horrifying <laughs> little uh, it just, that's just weird it's just really weird oh well, yeah i guess you can follow our twitter if you want to see really creepy water bottles uh, yeah that's that's a thing so yeah, we are, you can also follow our personal Twitter accounts. I am Alcatra- at Alcatraz with a 7 instead of a T and an underscore at the end, and he is at Nemesis Prime 1. So see whatever we happen to tweet. I don't tweet all that often. And, and he uh, tweets about robot toys. Yep, just got some new toys, got some new reviews out. Uh, watch she That's good. I recommend going and watching it. Uh, Bigots need not apply. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> So that's our, our Twitters. So yeah, that's the end. Hope you liked what you heard. Hope you tune in in another two weeks mm-hmm. when we'll talk about something. Talk about things in December. Yes, well, things in December. Hope you liked what you heard. Hope you tune in then. But until then, remember, please pony responsibly. See ya. Goodbye. Bye.